on being my father's daughter two years at a time. Fifteen. When my mother finally forced me to tell my father about my self-harm problem, his response felt like the verbal version of a cattle prod, empty and sharp. After gripping my lower jaw and pulling phrase after phrase out of my throat, he discovered that I had been singing songs of sorrow across my wrists in the secrecy of my bedroom closet. Without removing his eyes from America's Funniest Videos, he said, We'll do it in the bathroom next time. I don't want you getting blood on the carpet. 17. I scrawled, Don't ever forget what he said to you, across my wall in lime green paint. I looked at it every day, and I remembered. And even though he painted over it when he forced me to move into the unfinished basement with my mother, I know it's still there. And he knows it's still there. Beneath the whitewashed paint that covers everything except my memories, even though I smoothed my dress over my thighs, the scars are still there. Beneath the fabric that breathes more than I do, even though I brush my hair behind my ears, his words are still sunk in my skull. He knows they are still there, and I cannot ever forget. 19. He told me that if I wasn't home by midnight, then I shouldn't bother coming home at all. So I didn't. And while I was gone, my younger sister carved I hate myself into her thighs. And while I was gone, she was diagnosed with depression. And while I was gone, I wasn't there to sit with her in my old closet. I was just the skeleton tucked amongst her sweaters with notches nicked out of its rib cage. I was just a memory adding weight to the razor. My absence was a consistent pressure pushing the fear that everyone leaves down into her skin. Very similar to the pain that I never wanted her to feel, she now understands that to not be enough is one thing. But to feel the necessity to apologize for taking up the space that we do is something else entirely. 21. My mother, the smallest out of all of us, asked me at last year's Christmas, why don't you just be the bigger person? I don't think I will ever weigh enough to be bigger than his belly, to be bigger than his shoulders, hands that shove me to the ground, to be bigger than his mouth, teeth, spitting words like gravel flying off spinning tires, to be bigger than his ego. I will never be able to be the bigger person. When are you going to let it go? I grip my hatred and spite in the palm of my hand, muddled into palpability by the constant clenching and unclenching of my fingers into and out of fists. They melded together, making a purple color. They are an effective stress ball after all these years. To let that go is to allow an emptiness that I do not ever want to address. When are you going to forgive him? To forgive is to accept what he said what he did. To forgive is to validate. On being my father's daughter, I will forgive you when you are dead. I will stand over your grave and I will slit my wrists, and then I will apologize for bleeding on your dirt, because that is the girl that you raised me to be.